In this video, I'm going to give you the story of the Crazy Horse Memorial, which is billed as the eighth wonder of the world, the largest statue of its kind ever attempted, bigger than Mount Rushmore, bigger than the Sphinx, bigger than the pyramids. For the amazing stories on the road and at sea, subscribe to the Slow Boat Sailing channel. The Lakota chief, Henry Standing Bear, approached the Polish-American sculptor, Korzak Zilkowski, to build a great mountain statue of the famed warrior Crazy Horse who routed General Custer, Custer at the Battle of Little Bighorn. Zilkowski took up the challenge in 1948 after working on Mount Rushmore, which was completed in 1941, and he created many great public sculptures. The Crazy Horse sculpture was more ambitious than any great sculpture in history, standing taller than Mount Rushmore, the Pyramids, the Sphinx, or the Statue of Liberty. It is smaller than the Gateway Arch in St. Louis, but unfortunately for the sculptor, the Black Hills Mountain that was selected was ill-shaped for the full torso and horse head sculpture of the Lakota leader pointing bare-chested on horseback. It was not until 1998 that the face of Crazy Horse was completed under the direction of Zilkowski's wife Ruth. The sculptor died in 1982. Now the finger pointing outward has emerged from the mountain as his daughter leads the enormous enterprise which has employed four generations of Zilkowski's family, which was conceived in the late 1940s. The nonprofit has refused public funds and has started a 12-credit hour Native American university. It was a fascinating tribute to the indigenous North American cultures. It is very ironic that the nearest town was Custer, and it is on the border of the Custer State Park. The story moved me to tears several times at the Crazy Horse Monument. After that, I visited the Mount Rushmore, where Zilkowski's work was ambitious. Mount Rushmore's Visitor Center emphasized how the 14-year construction was pragmatic. They emphasized how the sculptor Gutzen Borgium, a Belgian-American, was tweaking the design of the bus of Washington, Jefferson, Roosevelt, and Lincoln to fit the mountain. For example, Thomas Jefferson's face was fitted to accommodate the crack in the mountain. Borgium died a year before completion, but his son supervised the end of the sculpting until the outset of World War II. The weakness of the Crazy Horse Monument, while much larger than Mount Rushmore, was that the visitors were not allowed to get closer to it. I did not take the bus ride, which was $4 in addition to the $12 entry fee, but I think the presidential trail got me much closer to the monument than the bus ride would for the Crazy Horse. Uh, this, the scale of Crazy Horse is not appreciated because of the distance visitors are from it. Some of that was necessary due to the Native American monument still being very much under construction. I would say visit both. Uh, it's a $12 when I was there uh, to visit Crazy Horse, and then you pay $10 to park at uh, Mount Rushmore Monument. Uh, neither one should take most people more than a few hours. They're only like a 20-minute drive from each other. You could actually not pay for Mount Rushmore if you're willing to walk a little further. I, at least before Memorial Day, I saw s spots where you could park right before the parking garages in the entrance where you pay the $10 at Mount Rushmore. But Crazy Horse, you do have to pay no matter what. Both these monuments are right next to each other. So if you are in the Black Hills, you can visit both of them in a single day and have more time to spare exploring the beautiful Black Hills of South Dakota. I'm to the Slow Boat Sailing Channel. Bye-bye.